Our game of the week had us road tripping to Northern High School as the Patriots hosted head coach Tony Lasani and the Chopticon Braves. We pick it up in the first quarter. Chopticon down 13 to nothing. Take a listen. And the kick is up. It's a good kick. It'll go to Burley. Burley receives a kick. And he has daylight. And he's going to go. One man to beat. He beats him. Chopticon's going to score. And that's the spark we were looking for. Jeffrey Burley, kickoff return for the Braves. That spark would be the only one for the Braves in the first half, down 33-17 to at halftime. In the second half, they trailed by as many as 30 points, but it all changed in the fourth quarter. Braves quarterback Donovan Jordan finds Tyler Mills. Whoop! Whoop! Check out the moves. Chopticon cuts the lead, 54-32. to Under two minutes to play now, Jordan finds Nick Gray in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, and then he finds Anthony Lasani for the two-point conversion, one-handed catch style. 54-48. Time expiring now. One last chance for the Braves, but they can't recover the onside kick, and Northern hangs on, 54 to 48. Okay, we're here with Braves head coach Anthony Lasani. Coach, what a game! I mean, you guys just ran out of time there. To use a boxing term, you guys threw some punches and bunches there at the end and scored a bunch of points. You were down 30, and you lose by six. Is there a moral victory, at least offensively, for you guys? Well, I mean, we did execute pretty well on offense, but, I mean, it's a three-phase game. I thought special teams, uh, you know, we at least broke even, if not finished ahead. But, by, my goodness, we really got to get our defense fixed. I mean, we had a lot of guys out tonight. You know, we were missing a few key deep, you know, linebackers, and we were just throwing guys in there to see who could make a play. And, uh, obviously, we need to go back to work. You're a hard-nosed native of Pittsburgh, so I know you want to change the identity on this defense. How do you sort of do that? Well, as I said, we got to find some playmakers. You know, I, don't, I don't care who they are, but we got to find guys that want to step up and get to the ball. I mean, we're at our best when we're a swarming defense and a hustling defense. I thought we looked a little slow tonight. I mean, give credit to Northern. I mean, their offensive line really uh, did a great job in executing their blocks. Uh, I thought their passing game was dangerous as well. You know, um, we needed to keep the ball on offense and try to get off the field in defense. And we did a good job of one, but unfortunately, we didn't do a very good job on the other. This team is way better than 0-3. I mean, the record is certainly not an indication of the talent here. How do you sort of turn it around and right the ship? Well, I, I think that, you know, fundamentally, we got to do things right at practice. We've got to do the little things right. You know, I got some guys banged up or some guys missing school. And, uh, you know, we got to come down in a serious work mode. And I thought, and I told the guys that this week, you know, it was definitely missing. It was missing. And that's what showed. When you don't execute well at practice, it's tough to go out and do it on game day. And some of these guys, you know, they've got to get it through their head. They just can't walk on the field and expect good things to happen when they're not getting getting it done in practice. But, uh, you know, you could see our offense had a better practice this week than our defense. And, you know, hey, we scored what, 48? You score 48 points, you ought to win a game. You know, and, uh, you know, we, we just did not get it done defensively, and I think it all stems from a bad week in practice. I mean, I'm not going to blame our injuries or, or the guys that were out. It's just the guys on the field did not get it done. On to soccer now. A few weeks ago, we spotlighted the Leonardtown Girls Raiders soccer program and their dominance. But the boys are also making a strong case, going undefeated last season and getting off to a great start this season. This program has a commitment to excellence. You know, we're building from the bottom up, and I think that's the key is you've got kids that, in middle school that want to play on this team. And you know, they look forward to trying out and possibly making our team. So it's very competitive. Every practice is very competitive. And um, yeah, we've won back-to-back -back conference championships going into this year. Um, you know, and, and we'd love to do that again, but our, we have to set our goals higher. And we haven't won a region uh, final since I've been here, and that's a, that's a huge goal of ours. And you know, I think if things come together this year, we got a, very, a legitimate opportunity to do that. Um, this group's, you know, senior laden, and you know, we have a lot of a lot of returners that with experience. But you know, we'll, we'll just have to take it one game at a time. Leonardtown has great kids; they're real coachable. Um, they play hard. Uh, they're self-motivated, and you know, there's there's no drama. It's just it's a lot of fun. If you step onto St. Mary's Rikens campus for the first time, it's easy to get lost. It looks more like a college campus with all its palatial academic buildings and state-of-the-art sports facilities. But students from all over the region, near and far, once they get on that campus, they immerse themselves into the Riken way. 
Um, the athletic program's on the upswing. I've been here seven years, four as an assistant, and now three as a head coach. And I've seen the support has only grown from both the administration and the community. Uh, we're, we're coming up the ladder in our conference by having um, support from within, and then we're reaching out to a, a four-county area to bring in quality student-athletes. Uh, our team has been all-American academic twice in the last two years, and I expect to be another in the th third year. But we stress academics, so we're bringing in kids who are smart kids. You don't have to worry about their grades. Then they can go forth and play uh, extracurricular activities like sports. And I think that the backing of the administration and the administrative staff has worked together to, to build our program in all sports. I know at our games you can look in the stand and you'll see that last night we had the women's basketball team, a lot of girls here supporting us. We've had the soccer team. Um, I know our girls, we encourage our girls to go out and support the other sport. So when we had our first um, home football game, majority of my team was there supporting them in the stand. So, And it's not only that, but we see a lot of the faculty and um, the athletic department uh, members are also here. One of the interesting things about Riken is it's very much uh, a community here. You know, it's almost just like a small college where, you know, everybody comes out in and supports the teams and, and, and cheers for each other. And we get a lot of support. You know, athletic director Dave, he's really very supportive of everything that we do here. And they, they understand the tough mission that we have competing. And, and also, you know, you can't put all your focus on competing because really what they're here for is, is their education too. You know, so it's always a tough balance between you know, doing, making sure the schoolwork is done, the academics are correct, you know, and trying to compete at, at a top level. All the sports are starting to come together and just coming out to support each other's games and everything. We just, it's all just the Riken team and it doesn't matter which sport it is, we just keep going, keep supporting our friends and teammates. Yeah, just like Colin said, there's a field hockey game, soccer, football, come out to it, there's a volleyball game, all the other sports come out to it. So it's really nice. Right now it's an exciting time to be a St. Mary's Reich and the coaches we've hired here are, uh, I think 90% of them have either played or coached at a very high college level, uh, including Coach Franks, you know, with football, uh, his accolades, Doug Creek, who pitched in the uh, major leagues for nine years, Megan Elliott's with softball, who was probably the, the top pitcher in the world at one point. So it's an exciting time to be here, especially if you uh, have aspirations to go on and play in college, you're going to be prepared academically and athletically. Aside from excelling on the field of play, Riken puts a premium on classroom prowess as well. Meet soccer standouts Christina Basile and Lexi House, both defining the very term student athlete. I think as an underclassman, everyone thinks athletics, 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 and as we get older and the college process starts, we realize that for some people, they get lucky and sports takes them all the way, but in most cases, grades do matter. And here at Riken, they emphasize athletics, but it's always student-athlete, not athlete who goes to school. It's student-athlete, meaning that your classroom abilities will always carry you further than sports, no matter what. In my opinion, academics for sports is definitely one of the most important factors. Uh, here at Riken, we have a rule you have to maintain a a good GPA in order to even play sports and that's something that we all take I think in high consideration definitely and it's a big part of a team as well. A special thanks to Hilltop Signs and Graphics for our set and a special thanks to you for watching Southern Maryland Sports Journal with me Travis Thomas exclusively on Metrocast Channel 10.